Hello, good morning. This is Tracy Payton. We're going to go ahead and get started here in just a few minutes uh, with our Sinorama training for this morning or this afternoon, depending upon where you're at. This um, actual webinar is going to be on the e-commerce portion. So going into the back end or the management area of your franchisee Sinorama site and setting it up so that it is e-commerce. So we're going to talk about basically selecting a payment method and we're also going to be looking at setting up the e-commerce for the various products and categories as well as a couple other little things. So we'll get here we'll get started here in just a couple minutes. I just want to give everybody enough time to get on to the webinar. Okay, well we're going to go ahead and get started. I don't know how many people are actually enrolled and I know there was some confusion about times. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. I have it on a webinar so basically those that are attending the webinar you're in what's called a mute mode unfortunately you can't just talk and ask questions out loud so if you could please type those questions into the questions or the chat area on your go to webinar control panel and I'll try to get to those during the webinar I'll definitely get to those at the end of the webinar so okay we'll go ahead and get started so what you see is I'm working on the Sinorama demo store. So this is just a demo site. Um, it's supposed to emulate the franchisee website that you are we're currently working with. So on the front end, this is what the customer will see. So you'll have your Sinorama information up there at the top at the heading. You do have some rotating banners that you can see towards the top. There is this toolbar where you have your Sinorama and some different pages in which customers can come in to search local projects, select banners, design those banners, signs, and so forth, and then actually check, our, check out using the shopping cart method. So again, this is the toolbar in which they would navigate through your site. You also have some additional information on the front end of the site that the customers see they can request a free quote, uh, they can browse and order signs, and see the online catalog. You'll have some different information here at the bottom, which is completely customizable. So if you want to edit the text or any of the images on the home page, you have that ability to do so. You have the ability to upload new banners if you'd like and choose those and have those rotate as well. So there's quite a bit that you can do with your store. I do ask you that to attend some additional webinars. There is an online manual and help sheets and videos on how to do that at the Sinorama.com forward slash website. So if you put websites at the back end of this URL, it will take you to that training page where you can see the information there to reference. So today we're going to actually go into the management area. It's where you would log in to do any type of site customization. Uh, we're going to be basically showing you the e-commerce setup so that we can turn on the shopping cart and then where you can see and receive those inquiries, orders, and artwork that might be uploaded to your site. So at the back end of this URL, I'm going to put forward slash manage. And that's going to take me to the login page for the management area of the site. So you will be given, or you probably already have, a email and password set up. So basically we'll just type this in. Okay, so the management area on the back of the site looks like this. When you sign in, you're going to be taken to what's called the home screen. So if you click on this little house, it also takes you there. Uh-oh, it just logged me out. Let's try this again. Okay, so if you click on the home screen, it's going to take you to this area. And when you're first setting up your franchisee website, there's definitely a checklist that you want to go through. You want to go into each of these five links to set up your site correctly. And we did have a webinar earlier that talked about that, but I'll quickly go through that for those that might have missed that webinar. General settings, if you click into this link, this is where you're going to have your site title, 
It's where you can put a meta description for your site. So again, when we talk about search engine optimization, you want to make sure that you have a nice one or two sentence description about what your site offers. It's always important to put your location in that description as well as your name or your company name, which would again would be Signorama. But the location is really going to be what sets you apart from other franchisees. Meta keywords are also uh, important for search engines to take a look at. If anyone's Googling Signorama or they're Googling signs, you want to make sure that your website pulls up and gives them that option to find your site and go on and shop and so forth. So you'll want to make sure that you enter uh, meta keywords here for your entire site. Moving down, you can also see products and pricing. This is automatically set to turn off. However, if you are turning on e-commerce, you will need to be able to show pricing in order for people to actually use a credit card and check out. So you'll want to turn that on um, to show prices. You also can adjust lead times, and this is added to the supplier lead time. So if you need any additional days as far as um, for artwork and so forth, you can increase or decrease the lead times on your site. Okay, and any changes that you make, you're going to want to save your changes. So if we went ahead and said show pricing, when I click on show pricing, because this is e-commerce related, you have that ability to change your price margin for every product on the site. So you do have margin restrictions based upon what Signorama Corporate has established. You have a minus 35 or a plus of 35. So basically, if you key in 35, it's going to add 35% to all the existing sale price. So if you already have a margin of 40% and you key in 35% here, it's going to actually be a 75% margin. It adds it together. So I do want to make sure that you understand that. And right now, um, in the future, it will be more specific to categories and products. But at this point, if you put a margin change here, it applies to everything on your entire site. So just wanted to point that out. So you'll want to save your changes up here at the top right. Okay, and then if we come back into the home screen, we also have a link here to change your contact details. This is really the contact page on your site. So if I click into this little link, it's going to have my email. Um, it's a no reply email that I can put in there, my telephone fax, and then if you have any of these other accounts such as Google+, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you can obviously put your information in there and that will show on your contact page for the customer to view on your website. Okay, so we'll go back into the home screen. Managers, this is an area where you can give other users permissions to your site. So if the manage box is checked, it just means that that individual has access to log in to the back end of the site where we're at and make any customization or changes to your website, including suppliers, pricing, products, and so forth. So you do want to be very careful who you give access to, um, but once we add a user, you'll want to come into this area and give them the proper permissions. So if manage is checked, that means they have access to this management area. If inquiries is checked, that means that individual is going to receive an email anytime an inquiry is made on the site. And if orders is checked, that means they're going to receive an email every time an order has been placed. This is an additional email to what uh, uh, is on the back end. So you can view all inquiries and orders on the management area of your website, but this is just like a notification that if someone is um, purchasing something or inquiring about it, you get an email right away alerting you to the fact that someone's gone on to your website. So you can make your selections and then save your changes. The other thing that we're going to talk about is this e-commerce. So I'm going to wait just a moment before I go into there 
The last thing on this little five list checklist is if I go into the Google Analytics, this is where you have your Google Analytics account code and you can key it into the back end of your website so that when Google looks at this, they it's a free service. They'll give you some reporting as to who's visiting your website, what they're looking at, um, and so forth. So you definitely want to get a Google Analytics account. It is free. And if you don't already have one, you can come up here to this website here. And if you click on it, it will take you out to Google and you can sign up for one. Then just come back into the management area and then key in your code here. I think it's a 10 or so digit code. And you can put that in there and then make sure you save your changes in the top right. Okay, so those are some basic site setups that we went through in one of our earlier webinars, but I wanted to make sure that we got that in for those who might have missed that. Today's webinar is really focusing on the e-commerce portion and setting up your website to take online orders. So to do so, the, we did the first step, which was in general settings, we turned on pricing. You will need to have pricing for those products that you want people to be able to purchase online. The next step is actually setting up your e-commerce. So right here where it says e-commerce, you have this blue link for you to set up your payment details. You also have an e-commerce drop down from the navigation toolbar at the top. If you go into e-commerce settings, this is the same page that if you clicked on this link that you would be going into. So both ways get you into the payment settings area for your e-commerce. So if I go up here and I click on setting up my payment details, I will get to this e-commerce settings page. Now on this settings page, the first thing you have is your payment method. And you have a variety, or actually you have three choices here. You can choose all three, which is great. You can have on account, credit card, or pay on collection. I do want to let you know that when you turn on the shopping cart and you are taking a uh, credit card, you will definitely need to check credit card. And when you do so, some additional information will populate on this page. So when credit card's checked, um, you'll see that what you see here. If I uncheck credit card, it just basically goes payment on account, pay on collection, and you don't have those additional choices. So I'm going to check pay on credit card. Now the next thing, again, I have country, it's going to default to the United States. So if you're in Canada or Australia and you're working on Sinorama website there, you want to make sure that your country is selected correctly. Then you also want to come down here and you're going to need to choose a credit card provider. This is going to be the person who processes those credit cards for you. So we have two options available to you on these websites, PayPal and Authorize.net you will need to get an account with one of these. So if you choose PayPal, you'll enter your PayPal information. If you choose authorize.net, you can go ahead and fill in the information down here. So you'll be given a login uh, code from authorize.net and a transaction key. And then you'll obviously want to, we have it set in test mode because I'm on the demo site, but you'll want to turn on live transaction server in live transaction mode. Now if I was to choose, I don't want to switch it over, but I, if I was to choose PayPal, you really just have a login code and then one, I think it's transaction mode that you set to live. So your, your choices down here, depending upon which credit card provider you, you select, there's a, a different field down there for you to put your information. But since we have Authorize.net chose, we've got our login information, transaction key, you want to turn it to live, and then you have a transaction method. Your old Sinorama sites were authorization. Your new Sinorama sites are now capture. That means that automatically the payment will be sent to Authorize.net for them to process. Before, in authorization mode, it went to your Authorize.net net account and then you would have to log into your account and approve those purchases that you wanted to go ahead and uh, you know send through to have the authorized uh, actually process so you would have to kind of do that extra step in releasing 
those for processing by going into authorize.net. If you have it selected to capture, that's just going to basically say anyone coming onto the site, making a purchase, ordering it with their credit card, it's automatically going to be released to authorize.net and sent for processing. I believe capture is the default setting, so this will already be selected for you. Now, I have, I didn't mention earlier, under payment settings, you have the ability to put a minimum order value in there. So there are no restrictions on that field. So if you want to make your minimum order value 100 or anything less than that, you can. You just go ahead and key that dollar amount in there. And then when you've gone ahead and filled out all the information on this settings screen, you're going to want to save your changes. Okay, so then if we also go to e-commerce and we look at this drop down, we basically have gone into e-commerce settings. So we've already gone ahead and made our selections for our payment settings and so forth. Now we can also go in and set up shipping charges. So we can take a look at that as well. So if we go into shipping charges, you have the ability to add in shipping methods or options to your customer that's shopping on your site. So there's a couple of things. We have a shipping charge table and you can see that there is a shipping charge that's been added. It's a minimum order value of 35. There is no max on it, there is no charge and it's for a local store pickup. Now, if you want to edit this existing um, shipping charge, you can go ahead and edit or you can delete it. You also have the ability to put a new charge on. So if I want to come in here, I can select new charge. I can do a minimum order value of 100 and a maximum order value of zero. And what I can do is add in a another method. So if I want to do ground standard, I can choose that, and then I can put my shipping charge a flat fee of $20 if I want to put that, and I can make it specific to this website only. Then when I go ahead and hit save, it will add that in as a choice for that customer. So when they're checking out under shipping, they now have that um, ability to select that, that specific charge. Okay, now if you want to add a new shipping method, because we had local store pickup and ground standard as choices, if you want to add a new choice, you can go ahead and see that we've got ground standard here, local store pickup, and then like a test. If I want to add a new shipping method, I just click on this top right. I can give it a, a name, so if I want to do FedEx, and I want to do a two day, I can do that. I can give it a charge value, so if we want to say it's a hundred dollar charge. The method options, I'm going to just give it into a fixed value and then I can shave, save this shipping method. So I can build up my own shipping methods that I want to show on the site with those charges. So you can see now shipping method FedEx two day has been added. Okay, and it can be set as an active, which it automatically defaults, or a collection method. So collection method, you know, makes sense for the local store pickup. If I was to come back up to the shipping charge table, I now have that ability when I add a new charge, I can do a minimum order value of 100, maximum zero. But under this shipping method drop down, I now have FedEx two day as a selection for me to choose and then I can put my shipping charge of $100 and hit save. So now it actually has that as a method available to customers on my site. Once I've made my changes here, I can go ahead and save those changes. Now the other thing that you're going to see under the e-commerce drop down is the ability to look at your sales tax. So if we go into sales tax, you can actually say this store is exempt or you can choose your sales taxes. So if you want, 
you can see that this store has California, Connecticut, and Florida listed as far as applicable for sales tax. So if you are an exempt store, you can go ahead and flag that. If not, you can select those states where tax is applicable. Now the other thing that when, since we're talking about e-commerce, we want to show you where you can actually view any orders that are being made on the site. So we talked about in management settings that you'll get an email when an order is made. Orders are also saved on the back end of your website. So under your e-commerce drop down, you can go to view orders and this is going to allow you to view the various orders that have been placed on your website. So you can see those. They are given an ID number, a status, so if they're in progress, and then you should see basically the destination, which is the customer address, and then the value of that order. Now, if I want to view this one right here for $294, I can just click on View, and that's going to allow me to view the details of that particular order. Unfortunately, since I'm on this the SAR demo site. I don't have a lot of data in here. Um, but you can see there's the subtotal. A shipping wasn't applied, nor was tax. But you can scroll down and you can see what was ordered. So you can see there was a mesh banner and that was for $149, a standard banner. Okay. Now if there's a stock folio art charge, you can go ahead and export that art. So what we can do is if I click on export, it's going to allow me to export the art that they did on the online designer so I could see what that banner or what that sign needs to have on it. So by hitting export, it opens up my designer export and it will now allow me to export that design out of my system so I can now fulfill this order. So you have, obviously, they've, they've gone ahead and selected the banner in which they want, and you can select a format. So if you want to select any one of these formats, you can. I'm just going to do, you know, like a, a JPEG, and I can either include the bleed or exclude the bleed, and then I can just go ahead and export my artwork. So anything that they've created on the online designer, you can now export. So you just need to go into that order, click view, and then it will allow you to export that file. And you can see there's the file right here. So if I go ahead and click on this, I can then open up that file. So we'll go ahead and, and close that. So that is available to see once you view that order details. So we can come up here, and then we can go back to, we can either print, or we can go back to all the orders to see those. So that's where you would see under e-commerce, you're going to view orders, and this would show you all the orders that are being made on your site. This is a little unrelated, but to view inquiries, um, which are not those orders being used with a credit card and checking out, but maybe someone who's just requesting kind of a quote, you can come into inquiries and you still have that same option. So if I wanted to look at my inquiries, I can view those as well. So anyone that might have gone onto the site and said, you know what, hey, I'm interested in uh, purchasing this sign, and they place an inquiry, um, you can view those as well. Just like you can view your orders, you can view your inquiries. Uh, it operates the same way. You have your customer information there under destination and your dollar amount of the order, and then you can hit view to view the details of that order, including the artwork. Now, you also have the ability under inquiries to view form responses. Now, I do want to go over this because this is not included in the e-commerce, but anytime you have a form on your site, so there's that request for quote, there's the upload artwork form. So if a customer comes onto your site and responds to any one of those forms, that is available for you to view in the back end of your site. You just need to go to inquiries form responses. And you'll see the various types of forms. So this is a response to an upload artwork form. So if I wanted to go into this form, I could go ahead and view that form or that response. 
and it will give me my customer name and email address. But there's the uploaded artwork file that they've gone ahead and put in there. So if I want to go ahead and click into that file, I should be able to upload that artwork. I can see it up there in the top left. So I can view that, that upload artwork and I can get that out of the system for me to work on that order. Okay. So we've pretty much covered everything. The last thing that I do want to talk about under the e-commerce setting up your site is if we go into products and we head into categories. So these are the various categories that are available. And you can see that they're checked here. So that just means that that category is available on your website. We want to come over to this e-commerce tab. And when we do, this is going to allow us to check the categories in which we want to allow customers to purchase online. Now they will already be set to allow ordering, so they'll all be defaulted as checked. But if for some reason there's a particular category of products that you do not want customers to be able to place orders online, then you need to uncheck those categories. And that's going to turn off that shopping cart function for that specific category of products. And when you do that, you just go through here, uncheck those that you do not want customers to be able to order online, and then save your changes. So we'll go back and we'll view the site, and then I can take any questions that you might have had on this webinar. Okay, well I don't see any questions at this time. I do thank you very much for attending today's webinar and there are more scheduled for next week. I also have recorded it, so I will be posting it again on that training website, which if I click on this tab right here, I can go ahead, it's uh, www.signorama.com forward slash websites, I believe. Maybe it's just website. There we go. So you'll see here, this is the training page or training site for these franchisee websites. And you have, again, you have webinars that you can go into, you have videos, there's a training guide, a frequently asked questions. So this video of this webinar will go under webinars, it will be recorded and you can view it at any time. Thank you very much for attending today's training. Have a great day.